Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna be covering five top risk factors for prostate disease. The awareness around prostate disease, including prostate cancer, benign prosthetic hyperplasia, prostatitis, and other prostate-related issues is growing rapidly. And it's one of the most popular topics here on our YouTube channel. And this is probably for a number of reasons. The first probably being that prostate cancer is the second leading cause of cancer-related death in men. I'd also imagine that the rapidly growing numbers or incidences of prostate disease, due to factors that we'll get into in a moment, also has something to do with the increased interest around this topic or prostate health in general. And with being such a widespread epidemic health condition, I think it's gonna be very important that we figure out what the heck is causing it. And that's exactly what I wanna do with you in this video. I wanna cover some of the top contributing factors, some of the dominant influences that are contributing to this increased rise of prostate disease cases and the development of prostate cancer, enlarged prostate, etc. So getting right to it, one of the number one risk factors for developing prostate cancer, interestingly enough, is prescription drugs for enlarged prostate. So as I mentioned in videos in the past, prostate enlargement or benign prosthetic hyperplasia is actually one of the key precursors or early indicators of prostate cancer. So typically, prostate cancer, like all cancers, takes a very long time to develop. It doesn't just happen overnight and all of a sudden you have cancer. It's usually many, many, many years of stressful living and biological stressors, which lead to cellular and physiological dysfunctions that ultimately cause prostate cancer and all sorts of cancer. And for the most part, these effects and very early symptoms are subtle. They're usually just related to fatigue, hypothyroid-like symptoms, and really stress-related symptoms. Maybe a loss of libido, issues with sexual function, like erectile dysfunction, is often an early indicator of prostate enlargement. And by the time you have prostate enlargement, you're getting closer to prostate cancer. And I say all this because, interestingly enough, the major side effects, one of the major negative side effects of taking drugs used to treat enlarged prostate is sexual dysfunction low libido, erectile dysfunction, premature ejaculation, and practically every negative symptom you could think of regarding sexual health for men. And this is because most of these drugs used for enlarged prostate have a 5-alpha reductase inhibiting effect. And 5-alpha reductase is the enzyme that converts testosterone into DHT. And so these prescription drugs are rooted in the misinformation in the wrong science that DHT is what causes prostate cancer when there's actually just as much if not more evidence that shows no correlation between DHT and prostate cancer and there are even studies like this which I pointed out in the past that show that bioidentical DHT can actually reverse prostate enlargement and prostate cancer when combined with vitamin D3 therapy so it's really estrogen that's causing the enlargement of the prostate. I've shown various studies in the past. So be sure to watch this video if you wanna learn more about the truth regarding DHT and prostate health. Otherwise, the major thing wrong with prescription drugs used to treat enlarged prostate is that they lower DHT. And low levels of DHT is not going to correct prostate issues because it's not the DHT that's causing it, it's elevated estrogen that directly acts on the prostate and causes it to enlarge. And there is a case where if your estrogen levels are abnormally high, as they usually are in cases of prostate cancer and enlarged prostate, where your body might respond to the toxic levels of estrogen by increasing DHT to buffer that estrogen. So DHT is a very protective substance. Unlike testosterone, it can't be aromatized and turned into more estrogen, which is probably one of the major reasons that increasing DHT is a safer and smarter route for correcting prostate issues and other issues of low androgens and anabolic hormones than increasing testosterone because testosterone in high amounts under the influence of estrogen and cortisol can be aromatized into more estrogen. So the fact of the matter is it's not DHT that causes prostate cancer or enlargement. In fact, you need DHT for practically every physiological trait that is related to the male body. You need DHT to develop a linear beard. You need it to a certain degree to actually develop and grow healthy hair. You need it to develop lean muscularity and you need it especially for male reproductive health. So this is why these drugs, through their anti-DHT effects, often lead to low libido, your loss of sex drive, erectile dysfunction, premature ejaculation. They can lead to the development of man boobs or gynecomastia because DHT is essential for proper male sexual health and function. 
So through lowering it, not only are you contributing to all these issues, but interestingly enough, lowering DHT is just going to make estrogen more volatile in the body because ultimately testosterone and DHT can help to oppose the negative effects of estrogen. And it is the estrogen that contributes to the feminization of the male body when elevated, as well as the growth of the prostate and a major contributing factor to prostate cancer, breast cancer, and other cancers. So if you're somebody dealing with benign prostatic hyperplasia and you're taking a prescription drug for it, we would recommend that you find a way to get off that drug because most of these drugs are actually just doing way more harm than good. And this is why a lot of them have the black label warning on them. They are considered black label box prescription drugs because it's known that their effects are generally more negative than positive. Moving along, a second major risk factor for developing prostate cancer is obesity. So it's well known that there's an increased chance of getting prostate cancer amongst diabetes and many other health issues, degenerative health issues, if you are obese. And this is simply because the hormonal profile of somebody who is obese is generally unfavorable to good overall health. So usually obesity is related to hormonal imbalances involving estrogen dominance, high estrogen, low androgens, low anabolic hormone production. So their metabolism is generally slow and they're ultimately more stressed physiologically. And usually people with excess body fat have higher levels of estrogen because it's actually the accumulated estrogen in the body, in the liver, that's causing the fat cells to store. Typically toxins and estrogens and fat all have an affinity to one another. So usually an obese person has high estrogen. They have obviously a higher accumulation of fat cells, so they're more likely storing toxins and it's creating a very vicious condition where the estrogen in the body is contributing to the obesity and the accumulation of fat. And that increased fat is increasing more affinity of estrogen to be stored in the body. And as we just mentioned, estrogen is the leading contributing factor hormonally speaking, to not just the enlargement of the prostate, but also prostate cancer. So if you're somebody that is overweight, abnormally overweight, one simple way to lower your estrogen levels, which would be favorable to preventing prostate issues of all sorts, then you're gonna want to find a way to lose weight healthfully. Less fat means less stored estrogen. So it usually can help to correct higher levels of estrogen in the body by losing some weight healthfully. So if you suspect that you were overweight or you have some excess fat in the body, definitely be sure to check out our healthy weight loss course, which will teach you a pro-metabolic approach, a physiologically sound science-backed approach to losing weight in a healthy way. No rapid weight loss gimmicks will be found in this course. Nothing but helpful, safe advice for increasing the rate of metabolism, improving the hormonal balance of your body, and from that point, effortlessly losing weight over a natural course of time. So definitely check that course out in the description box below. Next, at least according to statistics, one of the major risk factors for prostate cancer is your ethnicity. So this is obviously going off the idea of the genes being a dominant factor in whether or not you develop certain diseases or not. And this is a theory or an idea that we don't entirely agree with. If you've watched our YouTube channel, we're not saying that your genetics can't have an effect on your body, but we're just saying that they're not the dominant influence in your health, that your lifestyle, your thinking patterns, even your diet, and all these other things that you have a great deal of control over are ultimately more powerful or influential than genetics alone. However, I'm bringing this point up nevertheless because I think there's something interesting to consider in regards to what sort of ethnic types are more likely to develop prostate cancer. So according to stats, African Americans have a 50% increase, so they're two times more likely to develop prostate cancer than other ethnic types. And what's interesting is if you observe the traditional diet or even the modern day traditional diet of African American people, what you find is that their diets are generally more rich in the polyunsaturated fats that we talk a lot about on this YouTube channel. So the polyunsaturated fats, in short, have many overlapping effects with estrogen. They can actually impair the liver's ability to detoxify estrogen, meaning that the liver is gonna accumulate more estrogen, and that estrogen, again, is a major risk factor for abnormal cell growth and the growth of the prostate and prostate cancer. So this might not be a thousand percent accurate or a scientifically proven claim. However, I think it's something to consider because what has been proven at least is that African-American genotypes are twice as likely to develop prostate cancer and I think that ultimately it's not just the way that you're born, but our bodies are a byproduct of thousands of years of engineering, of 
a certain way of living, of a lifestyle, of a diet. And the biological organism is largely a byproduct of its environment. So at least when you consider some of the dietary epigenetic factors of African American people, at least through my research and observation, I would imagine that one of the major reasons for this increased risk has a lot to do with the diet or the dietary consumption of the polyunsaturated fats, which are known to contribute to cancers through estrogenic and toxic effects. So even if it's not necessarily true alone that your ethnic type is a dominant risk factor, this brings us to another major point, a fourth major point, or a fourth major risk factor, which is, of course, diet. So there are plenty of things in our modern diets that contribute to cancer. It's no wonder that cancer has skyrocketed because when you take a look at the standard modern diet of the world today, it is heavily, heavily estrogenic. Not only does the standard American diet and most modern industrial food contain actual xenoestrogens, so estrogen mimicking substances, but also phytoestrogens, chemicals in the food that mimic estrogen. And again, it is largely the estrogen, the high levels of estrogen that are contributing to the enlargement of the prostate and the prostate cancer. So taking a look at diet, the major thing you're gonna want to avoid or greatly reduce your intake of are the estrogenic components. These are the polyunsaturated fats, as just mentioned. So look up what a polyunsaturated fat is, learn about them, find out what foods they're contained in naturally, and also what other foods might contain them, and greatly avoid them as much as possible. You're also going to want to look out for all phytoestrogenic foods in general, which largely include your grains and legumes. Also, a lot of plant substances in their raw state have phytoestrogenic properties as well as, of course, alcohol. So alcohol is one of the major estrogenic substances that people consume today. All of these foods you're gonna to wanna to get off of to decrease your risk of prostate cancer, but perhaps the simplest way to go about it is to just avoid the consumption of your fast foods, your processed foods, and ultimately all of the industrialized junk foods. But depending on where you're at in your knowledge of nutrition and diet, if you're already eating, let's say, an organic whole foods diet, you just might wanna refine your knowledge a little bit more and start to take a look at what are some of the foods that contain the polyunsaturated fats and the other phytoestrogens. Because a lot of otherwise considered healthy foods or foods that are natural, like your nuts and seeds, most of your grains, your legumes particularly, and again, a lot of vegetables do contain anti-thyroid, pro-estrogenic effects and are not necessarily good for your health despite what we have been told. So I would just recommend doing some of your own research in regards to the estrogenic effects of the polyunsaturated fats. And again, start to refine your diet a little bit from that point. If you are especially eating a diet that you consider healthy, but you're still having health issues. All right, so getting to our fifth and final increased risk factor for prostate cancer, we have stress. As I always say in these videos, I think stress is the number one cause of all illness, of every disease. Because when you look at what occurs in your body hormonally, chemically, when you look at what happens to your metabolism, whether it's you have diabetes, hypothyroid, hair loss, or cancer, generally what is happening is your body is stressed out and there's a dramatic imbalance between the protective androgen and anabolic hormones and stress hormones. It usually goes like this, where your body is overproducing all of the stress substances and underproducing all of the androgen protective anti-stress substances. So stress in all forms, and everything we just talked about is ultimately a form of stress, you know, dietary stress, environmental stress, biological stress, chemical stress, but what we're talking about specifically here is the psychological stress. So as I've talked about before, there are studies that show that acute stress can increase the production of estrogen. So estrogen doesn't just rise under the influence of things like alcohol and prescription drugs and these estrogenic foods, psychological stress can trigger estrogen. So there's a feedback loop between cortisol and estrogen. They tend to stimulate one another in a vicious circle. And just being stressed out mentally and emotionally is going to be one very profound way to increase your estrogen levels amongst your prolactin levels, your cortisol levels, and all of the stress hormones that tend to lead to disease and stress in the body. So if you're doing all the right things, dietarily, environmentally, lifestyle-wise, but you haven't necessarily addressed the psychological stress in your life, that could be a major reason for any sort of health issues or symptoms you're dealing with now and a contributing factor to prostate cancer and cancer in general. I tend to think that people become ill in general just when they're overly stressed. Again, whether that's because they just went through intense psychological stress or they didn't sleep much for two days and then they drank and then they ate junk food and then they overexercised. So any sort 
of intense long-term stress will shut down the immune system. It will make your body more susceptible to developing issues uh, on a cellular level, and it can cause the hormonal imbalances that are favorable to ill health. So estrogen is going to rise under psychological stress. Estrogen is the major contributing hormonal factor to prostate cancer and enlargement. So getting a handle on psychological stress will also be key. Be sure to watch our other videos that we have on psychological stress to get some tips on how to handle it there. We also recommend looking into cognitive therapy, just learning to communicate, I think so key. In my experience with cognitive therapy and mentoring, I've come to find that every problem in life is a communication problem. And that's all stress is, it's a problem. So especially in regards to mental and emotional stress, if that's something you're dealing with, find out what's the problem, what needs to be communicated about it, and to who. And that's usually a pretty simple formula for I think dissolving a lot of the psychological stress people have today. All right guys, so there you have it. Five top contributing factors to increase likelihood of developing prostate enlargement and prostate cancer. These are the things that you're going to want to start to become aware of in your life and get a handle on. Remember, the cure is in the cause and you can only handle what you can face. So if you don't address these things, if you don't look at these areas of your life and other areas of your life, then you can never handle them and therefore they're gonna handle you and probably not in a way that you'd want them to. So hopefully becoming aware of these things have helped you increase your awareness in general about the things that are affecting your health positively or negatively. And from here, you have some tips on how to get a handle on these things and actually start to decrease their effects on your body to hopefully improve your overall health. Now remember, we have tons of videos on the YouTube channel that can help with all of these areas separately and of themselves. But if you're interested in having this information all in one place regarding how to ultimately balance your hormones and improve your metabolism favorable to good health, I would definitely check out our healthy weight loss course. As I mentioned in this video, obesity or just improper metabolic health in general is a major contributing factor to prostate cancer development and sexual health related issues. So taking that course is not gonna be beneficial just for achieving an ideal body mass and composition, but for improving your overall hormonal and metabolic health and could be helpful in this regard. Otherwise, for additional information and resources, be sure to check out our blog with plenty of blog posts related to prostate health and our online tonic herb shop where we carry various herbs that have been clinically proven to improve prostate health. Both of these things along with the online wellness academy can be found in the description box below.